Uh, okay. So good afternoon, everyone. And uh, yeah, I don't know what's wrong with my screen, but I I should be in the in a very beautiful island. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, hopefully all of you can follow my voice. So uh, today we are going to study about the third lesson, which is continuation of mechanics. Okay. So this is about the uh, the dynamics and you can turn on your screen if you want with the video background yeah that you like because uh, as I said before one of the important things is to have fun during the lecture right so uh, I want to share my screen yeah. I hope you can follow Uh, this is better because it's uh, larger. Okay. Can you see the screen now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Great. I will start the lecture. Yeah. Uh, so um, we already talked last week that uh, we can study the motion of a body using uh, kinematics. We know there are some uh, important definition or concepts, yeah, which is the uh, distance, velocity, and acceleration. So the distance, velocity, and acceleration, they are uh, important to study the kinematics or the study of the motion of a body, right? You have scalars and vectors because you need besides the magnitude also the uh, direction yeah the direction of the uh, the direction of the force yeah so the direction of the velocity the direction of the acceleration and sometimes the acceleration is not always the same direction as the velocity yeah for example if you have a moving body uh, like a spring yeah spring although the velocity is to the right because of the spring force yeah, the acceleration is to the left so in this case we have a deceleration because we have a negative acceleration which is given by the negative uh, velocity the decrease, decrease in the velocity so this decrease in the velocity uh, is caused by a deceleration and another example is parachuting if you are falling from the sky and then you put on your parachute yeah you will have this kind of uh slow slower velocity because now there is an air drag yeah the air drag is directed opposite to the falling uh, motion so you are uh, actually in this case you are having a deceler deceleration and now uh before we have not considered what caused a body to decelerate. Yeah, we don't uh, the cause of the change in motion. No? In this section, we we learned that this is due to the force. Yeah? So the force is an agent or something uh, that will cause change in the motion of a body. So for example, if your body moves in a straight line, and there is a force acting on the body, then if the force net is not zero, the body will change its direction or will have a change in the motion. Yeah, will have a change in the motion. For example, uh, it is possible that the direction is still the same, but the velocity is decreasing. In this case, you have a force that is opposite to your motion. Uh, in this case, your motion is still a straight line. But now uh, the body will start to change the velocity, and this is uh, equivalent to say that the body has a net force on it. Yeah, simple example is for example, uh, you kick a ball. You kick a ball. Yeah, the ball will move in a straight line, for example, and then after some some time, the ball will start to get slower and slower, and finally will stop. Yeah, this is because 
there is a force acting on the grass, uh, on the ball. This force is the, there are two force actually. You have the friction, you have the friction which is caused by the, uh, by the, the uh, contact between the ball and the grass, yeah. And you have air drag. Air drag is the friction from the air, because the ball moves in, uh, in the air. It will cause a little bit deceleration, and these two forces are responsible for the stopping of the ball. Yeah. So we go to the uh, topics today, which is the well-known Newton's law. I think uh, most of you already understand or have studied this law before we will go to the force the definition yeah and uh, also we will study um uh, the movement yeah okay wait and uh, and we also have this uh, uh what do you call it the uh, popular force yeah gravitational force, frictional, and the normal force. So all of this is uh, important to understand. Yeah? The first question is very uh, closely related to the uh, daily activities. For example, you know this bus, yeah? Uh, this is the Green Campus bus. And uh, this bus is responsible for picking you up in some places and then bringing you to uh, around the campus yeah and what caused the bus the bus to move yeah? what caused the bus to move if we study kinematics we are only concerned with the velocity distance time and then try to find the position at certain time yeah but now the question is what caused the bus to move well, I will ask uh, uh, one of you, yeah, uh, Josephine, uh, Josephine Fatim. Uh, can you please uh, turn on the mic and uh, try to discuss with me what caused the bus to move? Hello, Josephine. Yeah. Are you there? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, can you explain to me why why the bus can move? Just use your logic. Yes. Because there's force. Uh, that's right. What kind of force is it? Uh, what 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 is what is uh, what do you mean by the force? Yeah. Which force? Yeah, your answer is correct, but which which force? Can you think about this? What what causes the bus to move? Uh, what force? Uh, uh, what causing the bus to move? Uh, what is the engine doing? What is the engine doing? What is the function of the engine? Okay. The engine is connected to, uh, you know, the mouse pointer here. What is the what is the engine connected with? To the wheels. The wheels, right? Uh, when the bus move forward, in which direction is the the wheel moving? Around the clock or opposite to the clock? Um, clockwise. Yeah, clockwise, clockwise, right? Clockwise. So when this uh, engine is moving the wheel clockwise, what does the wheel do on the on the floor or on the street? On the on the floor. What 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 is the wheel doing? It's actually pushing the pushing the the floor, right? Pushing the way. Pushing the floor in which direction? Yeah. To the opposite direction. Yes. 
So in the opposite direction, exactly. So we have here, uh, I will make a drawing here, yeah. So the wheel is moving in this direction, right? You said correctly that the wheel pushes the uh, the street or the, the floor in the opposite direction. And this is a force because of the bus, okay? Now, you know about uh, action and reaction, right? For every action, there is an opposite and equal reaction. So there is also a force on the bus. Is it correct? Yes. Yeah. Which direction does the floor push the bus? In which direction? To the right or to the left? Uh, sorry, sir? Because the bus is pushing the floor behind uh, to the left, so the bus will feel a reaction force to the right or to the left. To the to the right, right. So this is the reason why the bus can move because the the bus is uh, the bus is pushing the giving a force to the way to the road, yeah, to the left, and the road will push the bus to the right, yeah. Okay. So this is the reason why the bus can move forward. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Okay, so uh, I want to ask one more uh, person. Yeah, Flo Florencia, can you turn on the... Florencia, hello? Can you turn yes, on sir. the... Yeah. So is there a friction between the wheel and the street? Is there friction? You know friction? Uh, yes, guess yes. I can. All right. The friction is causing the bus to move. Okay. You know friction force. In what direction yeah. is the friction force acting? The, the, the friction force is acting on the bus. To the right or to the left? To the left. Right. To the left. Yeah. So... Why can the bus still move even though there is a friction force? Uh, because the friction force maybe it's smaller than the yeah than, than the yeah the force friction force that's exactly correct. The friction force is smaller than the the pushing force from the road, right? So the red one is larger than the black one, right? Okay, thank you. So this is the correct answer. Very good. Now, one important thing to understand is that the bus can move only if it is connected to the road. Yeah. For example, you pick up the bus like one centimeter above the ground. The bus cannot move even though you have a super engine. Yeah. So the important thing for everything to move, for example, when you walk on the street, the important thing is that you have to have friction force. Yeah? You have to have contact with the ground. Okay? You have to have contact with the ground. So this is the key. Yeah? So one of the things that we learned from this example is that forces causes something to change its motion and to cause a motion, yeah, to cause something change its motion, it must uh, consist of a force with pairs, yeah. Pairs means that every force has always their uh, partner, their partner, okay. For example, we have this one <coughs> and we have this one. They are equal and opposite. We call them action-reaction force. Yeah? The force are always in couples. Yeah? We have force action equal to minus force reaction. We will see this is the third now of Newton later after this. Okay, so this is the principle of motion. Of what causes everything to move. Even for this earth, our earth is constantly in motion, 
Yeah. Uh, what keeps our Earth to be constantly in motion? I wanna ask this time. Uh, uh, ya, yeah, oke. Okay. Rana Nabila. Nah, Rana. Hello. Ya. Yeah. Rana, what causes our Earth to move? Can you repeat again? What is the reason why our Earth can move around the sun? In a circle, in an orbit. What is the force behind? What is the force that causes our Earth to circle the sun? It starts with a G. What is this for? Can you, can, you, can you follow this? What is this? Something that causes the Earth to rotate. And all the planets to rotate a star. Which, what is the force called? Okay. What, what's the, the Because there is a gravity. Right. This is the force of gravity. Uh, gravity, yeah is force between two masses and more yeah force between mass body with mass so the reason why our earth can be in motion because there is gravity yeah uh, but the initial the initial cause of this motion is because in the early time before our earth was really like now there is a gas yeah a gaseous substance uh, They are collecting themselves because of gravity into a big mass. And after that, they become a very big stone, yeah, a stone like part, a stone like planets. And because of the motion of the gas at the beginning, our Earth also have the initial velocity. Yeah. So the natural, the natural condition for motion, yeah, uh, is not. Still, is not in rest, but is constant velocity. So everything, every everything around us, is actually moving with constant velocity. Yeah, there is no, for example, no no really body that is at zero velocity, because actually there is vibration, but there is small vibration that we cannot detect yeah? because of the thermal condition. The atoms actually vibrate at room temperature. Only in very cold temperature, they really stand still. At zero Kelvin, which is uh, practically impossible to achieve. Yeah. So everything is in motion. This is the scientist who first very important give important contribution to mechanics. He is the first one to really formulate. The relation between force acceleration and mass. We know that there are three laws of motion. This is the first. Uh, tell us about the property of a body to maintain, yeah, to keep the initial velocity, to keep the velocity uh, resistant to changes. Yeah, we call this inertia. For example, when we are in a car and we suddenly break the car, then our body moves forward naturally because of inertia. Yeah, because our body wants to keep in motion, and that is an important uh, fact. Yeah, so maybe um, I can ask. Uh, Kesa Cindy. Kesa? Yes, sir. Yeah. Why do we have, in this context, use our seat belts when we drive a car? Um, Can you connect with the in inertia? Um, so inertia is a tendency to keep our motion 
Yes. Why do we have to use seat belt when we are driving a car or inside a car? Uh, because when we drove a car, yeah. there are force in it. Um, I think it's the gravity force and then... Uh, yes. And what happens when you suddenly see a car in front of you? You hit the brakes, yeah? Yeah. You don't crash the car unless you are very bad mood, yeah? So you stop the break. Yeah. And what? What? Uh, why do you need this seat belt? Um. Because without the force, the car won't um moving. Yeah. And what happened to our body when we suddenly hit the brake? What will happen to our body? We we also stop or just we keep moving actually. We, I will stop. <laughs> yeah. If, for example, you're inside a car and suddenly a car in front of you moves crossing, oh, yeah. and you have to stop your car, right? You hit the brake. And what happens to your body? Um, I will... Does it suddenly stop or also follow, still follow the same velocity? I think stop. Yeah. Why? Why does it stop? Um, because if I because if not stop then yeah because you're wearing something what is this the seat belt right yeah the seat belt what if you don't use the seat belt I will um having the car crash yeah you will hit the dashboard of your car yeah you can hit the window of your car because your body has this property called inertia you know this is inertia so inertia is something that is um. They don't want to stop. Yeah, they will maintain the velocity. For example, you are in a very fast car and you suddenly break the hit the brake. Then you want to uh, move forward because you are in motion. Yeah, you are already in motion and suddenly you break and your body still wants to move forward. This is because inertia. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So can you give another example of inertia? Uh, in relation with uh, with your daily activities. Um, based on what I learned from high school, the yeah. Newton's law is uh, when the resultant gaya is zero if the yeah. the object does not move or did not get any force from the yeah. outside. So the example is when I put uh, the book my book in the table and yeah. that book is not gonna move so the yeah. the force is zero but then if i um kasih usaha then the book will move yeah. okay so when the book is staying still it will stay still unless you give a force okay yes. okay i can give you uh give all of you a very nice example of inertia okay so uh I don't know if you can watch at the. Yeah, I... can you see the yes. table, right? Yeah, I put my phone on the table, and below the table, there is actually a piece of paper. Okay. okay. Now imagine <coughs> you are to your, uh, for example, your boyfriend's uh, parents and eat at dinner okay and you want to make a big show you put all the di the dishes on the table and what you do is you suddenly grab the blanket of your table and when i move this blanket yeah or i move this paper look what happened look what happened to the phone when i move very slowly the phone will move right look the phone will also move can you see yes yeah but when I, I move it very quickly, look what happened. Can you see what happened? Yeah. Look once more, everyone. What happened to the phone? It didn't move, right? It stays at the place. Yeah. Yeah, it stays there. This is called, this is what I just say, this is called inertia. Because the, the phone, was not moving and I suddenly changed the movement. The phone does not want to move. 
because he has a property called inertia. And what happens, for example, if you move on the you you walking on the street, and suddenly in front of you is an elephant moving to your direction, what do you do? I will choose the other way. Yes, that's right. <laughs> but when a cat is moving towards you, maybe you don't want to move, right? You don't want to change. Yes. <laughs> you know, because the higher the mass, the higher the mass, the larger the inertia. It means for a larger or heavier object, it's harder to change. Yeah, Harder to change the motion. Okay, thank you for your answer. You can now turn off your mic again. So, you know, inertia yeah, is um, this sense. Inertia is proportional proportional to the mass. Yeah? The higher the mass, the higher the inertia. This is when you have, for example, a mosquito, a mosquito. The mosquito can very easily change the direction. Could you never see an elephant moving like a mosquito? Yeah? An elephant cannot move like a mosquito because the elephant has a very high, large mass. And you also see when you are uh, in a train, the train cannot suddenly move very fast because they have high mass. It moves very slowly and then after that it moves fast. But at the beginning, there is some large inertia that has to be over. The second law of Newton. Yeah? So the first law of Newton, it tells you about inertia. The first law says yeah, that if the resultant of the force on a body is zero, then the motion is not changing. <clears throat> I have a story regarding yeah, that someday, uh, professor who is uh, very very uh, famous yeah goes with his wife to the market yeah he, he likes to drive a motorbike okay and then when he went to the market with his wife he uh shop with his wife from vegetables and some things and so on yeah after that when he and his wife want to come back home the wife sits behind the husband, the professor, and the professor suddenly accelerates very fast. Yeah, the motorbike accelerates very fast because the professor likes to speed. Okay, and before there was no problem. Before there was no problem because his wife is holding him tight. But now his wife brings some heavy stuff and. When he arrives at home, he is very, very confused because when he look at bed, his wife is not there anymore. Yeah? Okay. Rah Rahmida Arif, can you turn on your mic, please? Rahmida, maybe the story is not funny for you. Can you explain why uh, the professor's wife is falling down from the bike? from what we just studied. Yeah, hello? Yeah, hello, can you hear me? Oh, sir, can you hear me? Oh, it's very loud over there, okay. Just turn off your mic, it's okay. It's very loud, I don't know where are you. You are all like on the top of the hill, yeah? Okay, maybe you can answer. Uh, Lee, can you turn on, Lee? Yes. Okay, Lisha. Lisha, yes, can sir. you tell me what happened to the professor's wife? Why is she falling down from the bike? When the professor accelerates from rest, hmm, what happened? From, from what we already studied. Can you connect with the inertia? Yeah. Can. Yeah. Okay. Can you please explain to me? It's because of the inertia, so he 
Yeah. So, so he fall yes. forward. Yeah. Oh, why is there? A, why before there is no problem? Or why after she bought many heavy stuff that that will become a problem? Sorry. Uh, at the first, when he and his wife were shopping, the wife mm -hmm. don't bring anything, right? Huh? Yeah. But after she shops many things, yeah, and now she suddenly fall down. Why? Because too heavy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because the mass increase, right? Yeah. The mass increase, so the inertia also increase. Increase. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. That's right. Thank you. So, as you can see, student, yeah, physics is very closely connected with daily life. Sometimes we don't realize that physics is everywhere, even in the story that I just told you, because the professor's wife bring no many stuff. Yeah, she now becomes more heavier, and when the professor accelerates, the inertia is higher, and she fall down because she was initially zero velocity. And when the professor accelerates, she will still maintain. She wants, she don't want to change the motion. So she falls behind. This is the example of inertia. You know, the story I just tells you, which I just told you, is similar to this story. Yeah. This is the professor's wife, and this is the motorbike. When the professor accelerates very slowly, the wife will have no problem. Yeah. So also, if the wife is very light, yeah, like this one, yeah, the wife is very light, she has also no problem because the mass is not so high. But when she becomes heavier, then when I put it, she will, live, she will still be there. <clears throat> so the conclusion is, yeah, the larger, the heavier you are, the more inertia you will have. Yeah, this is the first law. This is the first law. Many students get it wrong. They think the first law is that the zero resultant force is equal zero. The resultant force is equal. This is not the first law. This is just a mathematical statement, but it's not the first law. The first law is about inertia. That a body tries to maintain the motion, and this kind of inertia, the property, is proportional to the mass. Yeah. This is the first law of Newton. The second law tells you about the relationship between force and the change in motion. The higher the force, you will see, then the motion will increase. The change will increase. Yeah? This is the statement. So to make this statement equal, we have to introduce a constant, right? And this constant is called the mass. So this gives you, at the end, Newton's second law, which is F is equal to M times A. Yeah. Okay, and now this is a little bit difficult. What happens if I throw two masses at the same height with the same initial velocity? Yeah. For example, I have two, two things here. Yeah. I throw them from a certain height. And you will see they will drop or hit the floor at the same time. Yeah, they will hit the floor at the same time. They have different mass. You see, this is a little bit strange because according to what we study, the larger the mass, yeah, the larger the mass, actually this is larger. So when when they fall down, the smaller mass should hit first. The smaller mass should hit first. Why? Because the smaller mass has less inertia, has lower inertia. So yeah, has lower inertia. So it hit the table first. But what we see, they will hit the table at the same time. So who can explain this? Why do they hit the floor at the same time? Why hit the table at the same time? You see, because uh, the mass, yeah. It's not the same, but they, they hit at the same time. They hit at the same time. Can you explain what happened? 
Who can explain this? Okay. Ah. Can I try? Yeah, please, Samira. Um, they hit the floor at the same time because the gravitational pull is the same. That's very nice. Because the gravity that they, they feel, actually the gravitational acceleration, right? What do you mean? Yeah, gravitational acceleration. Okay, let's see. The gravitational acceleration is equal to the force, is it correct? And inversely, uh, proportional to the force, yeah? And inversely proportional to the mass, right? Yeah. Okay. So what happens for the smaller mass? For the smaller mass, actually, the acceleration uh, is the small mass divided by the small force of gravity, right? Because the force of gravity is mass times the gravitational acceleration, right? Divided by the mass. What happens with the mass? They will cancel out. Is that true? They will cancel out. For the, the bigger acceleration, for the bigger mass, we also have a bigger mass times the gravity, so they will also cancel out. So at the end, as you just said, Samira, the acceleration is the same because the mass will cancel out, right? So what does it mean? It means that a larger, a heavier body has a higher gravity, gravity force, but also a higher inertia. A small body has a small gravitational force working on it, but a smaller inertia. So they will cancel out, and at the end, the uh, acceleration of the gravity is the same for both of the bodies, because the mass will cancel out. This is the explanation by using Newton's law. So this is the reason why the small body and the big body yeah, with different mass, they will hit the floor, they will hit the table at the same time. Because the one has larger force of gravity, but larger inertia. The other has smaller force of gravity, but smaller inertia. Yeah. When, you, when you hear like I'm teaching, it's not like I'm teaching in high school, but I try to understand the concept to you, guys, yeah? To make you understand the concept of this. Okay. Now, there is another story. You know, I put a piece of paper together with this stuff here. And you will see they will not hit the table at the same time. The smaller mass will, will hit the table first. Now, I will ask you again, why is it for this case not the same? Can someone of you answer my question? Why the paper is not the same as, the, as, as, the, as this one? Why they don't hit at the same time? What happened? Can you explain this, uh, Miss Ding Ang Lee? Miss Ding Ang Lee? Mrs. Ding, can you can you turn on your microphone? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Ding Ang, why 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 is this happening? Why why is the why is the piece of paper slower slower than this one? What happened to the paper? What's wrong with all theory? Is there another force? Is there maybe another? Because... Yes, maybe because? No, sorry, sir, yes. Yeah, please, can you can you give your guess? Just try to use your logic. Mm. What happened to the paper? Why is it slower? Remember, what, what, what force does the paper feel? Besides gravity, there is another force. Do you remember the story of the parachute? Is it air force? Yeah, there is this air force. We call it the air drag. The air drag force. What in what direction is the air drag force? Is it downward or upward? Upward. 
it's upward, that's correct. So that's the reason why the paper is not falling at the same speed, right? Yes. Yes, because there is another force. We call it the air drag force. So what happens if we do the experiment, but in a vacuum? In a vacuum is in a place where there is no air. What happens when we do the experiment, when we repeat the experiment? Can you guess what will happen? Both if no will reach the floor at the same time. Yeah, they will hit at the same time. Okay, you passed the exam today. <laughs> Thank you. You can turn off your mic. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Your students, you see, physics is very interesting. Yeah, It's not just memorizing formula. But you have really tried to understand. Yeah, really try to understand the logic behind. Physics is something that you should have fun of. Yeah? You should feel excited of. Okay? So, you don't have to study physics in uh, afraid, afraid situation. Look at my background. Yeah? I'm on holiday. Uh, I can enjoy physics as fun as you can do. Yeah? And I, you, I hope that you can enjoy physics. If, if, don't be afraid if you cannot answer my question. You say, sir, I, 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 I cannot answer the question. It's okay. Just feel relaxed about this question. I just want you to understand that what we learn is very closely related to our daily activity. Yeah? Even when we walk on the street, we have to understand that our feet is constantly giving force to the to the, the, the way to the street, yeah, to the floor. We always push the floor behind. Yeah. And also remember, yeah, the third law now. The third law now said the relationship between action and reaction. Every force yeah, that you assert on a body, for example, uh, this one. For example, you you this is your hand here. Yeah, I'm not good at drawing. This is your hand. Um, wait. This is your hand. Yeah. You push your coffee cup. Yeah. You push your coffee cup to the left. The coffee cup will push you to the left. Okay. But why does your hand doesn't move to the left? Because there is also your body. Yeah, your body is pushing the floor to the left. So the floor is pushing you to the right. So in your body, in your body, the total force, the total force is zero. But in the cup, the total force is to the right. It's not zero. It's equal to m times a. So, when you analyze motion, there is always an equal and opposite reaction. This number one has the partner is number two. This is equal and opposite. <coughs> yeah. This is number three. The partner is number four. So, every force cannot stand alone. <coughs> it has to have the opposite and equal reaction partner. But remember this, students. The force and uh, action and reaction force is not working on one body. Remember, it's working on two body. Yeah, it's working on two body. Yeah, first it must work on two body. Two have the same magnitude. Three simultaneously. Four opposite. Yeah. So I want to give you another interesting example. For example, you move. Yeah, there. Uh, the story is about the lazy horse. I'm not good at drawing a horse, so please look at this is horse, not the dragon in Game of Thrones. This is a horse, yeah, not a dragon of Game of Thrones. Oh my God, this is an awful horse. Okay, I'm so sorry about my drawing. It's not a monster. Yeah, this is a horse. Oh my God. Okay, now. The horse is connected to the, uh, what we call this, yeah, uh, to the chart, yeah, to the chart. Uh, or let's say, 
uh, to this body, yeah, A is connected to B. No. One day, yeah, I will give another sample. Yeah, one day. Uh, who is this? Yeah. One day, uh, Zadin Riza, uh, Zadin Riza, yeah, Zadin Riza is, uh, is the driver of the horse, <laughs> is riding the horse, Zadin, yeah. You are going to the market, Zadin, and then you ask the horse to move, but the horse says, according to Pak Dodi, Pak Hendra, this lecture, uh, which I attend by the way, <laughs> I will not move forward. Because every time I give a force moving forward, the chart, yeah, rubak ini, the chart will always give another force in the opposite direction and equal force. So the resultant force will always be zero. Oh no. So you cannot force me to move. I can never move. Zadin, can you turn on your microphone? Yes, sir. Zadin, can you tell the horse what is the mistake of his statement? Um, the mistake. Yeah. The horse. You, uh, you listen. The horse. The horse is a lazy horse. He said because of the third law of action and reaction, and uh, uh, I will never be able to move the car because when I give a forward force, he will give pull pull backward. So I will never move. Why? Why is it? Why is, it, why is it wrong? Uh, it doesn't make sense, sir, because uh, the horse, uh, the force uh, given by the horse will not be the same as the chart. I think. Yeah, it's not the same, right? So it they, they are not action and reaction, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Why why is it possible that uh, the horse can move because they are not the same? Okay, so can you identify? The action and reaction in this case. What is the horse doing when he tries to move? Is he hitting the floor? Is he touching the floor? Yes, he does. Yeah. Where do the, where does the horse push the floor? To the right or to the left? Uh, push to the right. Yes, and the floor will push the horse to the left, right? Yes, sir. Yes, and there is also friction, which is opposite. But the friction is not as high as the horsepower, right? Yes. So what can you conclude from the story? The horse and the car is two different bodies or is the same body? Uh, it is the same body or because it's right. moving in the same direction. Yes, and because there is connection. What is connection? In the middle, right? There is connection. Oh, yes, Remember, when there is connection, then they are the same body and the same system. Yeah, this is environment. This is system. As long as they are connected, they are the same system. So thank you. Very nice answer. Yeah. You're welcome, sir. So the mis yeah. the mistake of the horse is because the horse thinks that the cart and the horse is equal. Is the action and reaction. This is not correct because the horse and the cart are in one body they are one body they are in a one system action and reaction can only exist between two different systems okay so this is the mistake of the horse you, you, you have to remember this action and reaction always happen between two systems yeah so there is another story which I want to ask again. There is a person on a boat. Yeah? The boat is not moving. So, because there is no wind, there is no wind because this is a sailing boat. This is a sailing boat. There is no zero velocity of the wind. So, what he does is he gives, he, he put, he install an air blower, yeah, kipas angin, near the sail of the boat, a very big blow, yeah, kipas angin besar, a very big, uh, Fan, a very big fan, and the fan is trying to move the boat. Now, my question to you anyone can answer the question. 
can the boat can the boat uh can the the boat move can the boat move or not using this technique can the the boat move or not i think no sir yeah but what, what's your answer jessica so because the fan only moves the the like the flag and not the the water yeah that's right because the fan and the boat is in the same system right so they cannot produce action and reaction because it's installed in the boat is this what you mean hello yeah so to make the boat move actually the fan has to be outside the system uh, installed in the docking station not in the boat yeah so body one and body two are separated now the boat can move. and this is what happens when you are playing as a child yeah with a paper you make a with a piece of paper uh, you can make a boat yeah you can make a boat with a piece of paper i don't have a piece of paper right now yeah but you can make a, a small boat here yeah from this piece of paper i used to play this when i was a child yeah Maybe I can. Just give you a little thing that you used to play. Yeah. You remember this kind of boat when you were small? Yeah. You put it on the water and what do you do? You give a push with your uh, mouth. Yeah. And the boat starts to move. Because you're you're you are, are not in the bowl, yeah. You are outside, so it's not it's not the same. <clears throat> now, one of the most difficult question is trying to understand tarik tambang, or there is usually in uh, Indonesia every um, every hol uh, national holiday, yeah, Independence Day, it is tarik tambang. Sorry. So I don't know if in Malaysia you have also this tradition. Uh, can some of you who are from Malaysia explain to me if also there is tarik tambang in Malaysia or not? Can can you explain to me if there is tarik tambang in Malaysia? Anyone? Uh, this is tarik tambang, for example. Yeah, this one. So I'm talking about this one. Okay. Can you see this? Hello? Okay. Uh, Pafin, Pafin, can you turn on your mic? Yes, sir. Yeah, it's nice to hear your voice. So, Pafin, what yes. do you think? Because the children, yeah, uh, Three against three there, yeah. Uh, let's say the the winner is the three children on the left. Yeah, the winner are the three children on the left. Can you explain using what we just studied? Why why there is a winner? Why there is no action and reaction at the same magnitude? Yeah, why is there a winner? Uh, so okay. probably the boys on the left hand side, they have more force compared to the boys on the right hand side. Uh, can you repeat your answer? I'm not so clear. Probably the boys in the left hand side produce more force compared to the boys on the right hand side. The force. Yeah. Okay. Which the the force is higher, uh, from the boys in the left. Yeah. But the, you say there is a equal and opposite. Yeah. Uh, my question to you is this: Are there two systems? Or actually, are there just one system? Remember the story of the whole Parfit? Yes, sir. Are there two, are there two systems or one system? Uh, one system. That's correct. Why is there only one? Because of the? Of the rope. Yes. Because of the rope. That's exactly. So they will fight each other.
but the opposite and the left to the right is not the same force, right? It's not the yeah. action and reaction. Yeah. They have different. They have different magnitude, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's the key. That's the key. So the action and reaction is between the children and the the what? What? What this? So is it a friction force? Yes, the friction force. That the action and reaction is between the children and the floor and the soil, right? Yeah. Yeah, so they are equal. They are equal, but they are on different system, right? The mm -hmm. one is on the system here, and the one is on the floor. So the conclusion is that the body, when we we try to analyze only one system, it can move to the left or it can move to the right, depending on the net force, right? Depending on the net force. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, what do you think, Pavin? Do you understand better now the laws of Newton? Yes, sir. Yes. What's the difference between my teaching and in high school? <laughs> Maybe I try to give more example, right? Yeah. More yeah. Daily. Yes. Is it is it more understandable to you now? Yes, sir. Yeah. So this is the way you should teach about a subject. You have to understand the concept, and I think. Uh, uh, this is actually enough for the lecture. I don't have to go to the other slide because if you understand until now what I said, then you should be okay with the other slide. Yeah. So what is the main dis uh, misunderstanding in in Newton's law? What what do you think? <coughs> what what is the main misunderstanding from your your experience maybe? What is the main misunderstanding? Maybe one of the misunderstanding is people don't understand what is system, what is employment. Is it correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, sometimes they think that this is two system, right? Yeah. If these two systems, then the left and the right must be the same, but it's not because they are connected to the roof. So when we try to understand mechanics, Newton's law, we have to understand what is the system and what is the environment. Yeah. The system is a body that is connected to each other. What is the property of a body that is connected to the other? They have the same one. They can be described by one mass. Is that correct? Mass. Described by yeah, by one mass and by one what? One mass and one acceler acceleration. Is that correct? Ah, yes, sir. They move with the same acceleration. Is that correct? Yep. Yes. Yeah. So this is the secret. What are the chances to increase the chances that you're winning? What are the chances? Uh, I mean, when you have, uh, when you want to win this competition, what have you, what, what do you need to do? So probably increase the acceleration. Yeah, how can you increase the acceleration? What do you choose? Which kind of friend do you choose? First, a Maybe friend with higher mass. yes, happiness. A friend with higher mass or with lower mass? Yeah. With higher mass, right? Yeah. Because, iner mass. because of inertia, right? Yeah. Yeah. Higher mass, difficult to change motion, right? Yes, sir. The second thing. What is this? Friction. What, what, what do we have to increase? The friction, right? Yes, sir. How, how can you increase the friction? By choosing the correct the correct shoes. Or if you, you cannot wear shoes, you have to find a place where you can be more stable with the ground, right? Yes, sir. You have to produce more contact with the ground. Yeah. And of course, the number three is find a friend with strong muscles. Yeah. With strong muscles. Yeah. So now you have a good strategy to win this game, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So physics is not only about doing the exam, but it can be a survival tool. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. For you, your answer. Okay. Yeah, so students, yeah, remember.
everything is connected to physics. Don't underestimate physics. It's everywhere. And you should have fun. Because it can give you winning chance. Yeah? The more the mass, the more the strength, the more the friction, and you can win. Okay? All right, this is interesting. So, I will go back to the slide. Slide, where was this? Um, yeah, this one. <coughs> this is Newton's first law. You can read this by yourself. What happens when you don't wear a safety belt? Yeah. And second law tells you about the resultant force. This is just mathematics. So this F1 and F2 are not uh, action-reaction pairs. They are not action-reaction pairs because they work on the same body. The body will move to the right because the force net net force is uh, <coughs> directed to the right. Yeah, sigma f is equal to six, which is the direction. Of, yeah, and this one will move in this direction. Why? Because the resultant force, as you can see, can be calculated from the mathematics. Yeah. So please study the slides. Yeah. But what I have to do is to make you understand about the concepts. Make you understand about it. It's more important than doing the calculation. Yeah, but it's also important. Yeah. So, you see, what is this? There is a balloon and the balloon is hanging. What happens when you suddenly <laughs> uh, put a needle on the balloon and it will suddenly explode? Yeah, and then the water will fall on your body. Yeah. Why? Why this happen? Because when you are exploding the balloon, there is no connection anymore between your hand and the water. So there's no, not more, not uh, the same system, and each of the water droplets now will move. Due to the gravitational force. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Inertia is the natural tendency to remain at rest or in motion. The reason that I don't give you this slide before is we want you to think first about what we saw, not only reading the screen, but also to think. Yeah. The problem with nowadays education is it doesn't encourage you to think creatively. This is not only problem in Indonesia, but all over the world. Students try to memorize rather than to learn. And this is actually not so good because many problems in daily life are solved when you really try to be creative. The new invention, new discovery, and also uh, to, to be able to follow, you have to be creative. Without it, and you only feel obligation, obligation, obligation. You cannot enjoy. Yeah? So try to understand the concept. Force is something that causes um, motion to change. Yeah? Its interaction always consists of pairs, action, and reaction. A force cannot stay alone. It has to have the partner. But the partner is in a different system. That's important. System and environment. The one is the force uh, of the action. The one in the environment is the force of the reaction. So when you analyze the motion, you just take one system. When you analyze the action reaction, you have to take two systems. Okay? Remember, analyze the motion, take one system. Analyze the for, uh, analyze the action reaction, two systems. So because the force is a factor. You have to also consider the direction of the force. Two force in the same direction will increase acceleration. Two force in the different direction, opposite direction, will decrease the acceleration. Yeah. Okay. What is the gravitational force? It's a force because of the mass. What is the normal force? Normal force is the force because of the contact. Because your body or this, this box is in contact with the table. So, 
when the uh, gravity acts on the force on sorry on the body the there is another force acting on the body which is directed upward in the same simultaneously in the same direction so my question to you yeah yeah my, it's okay my question to you is is the gravitational force and the normal force yeah normal force is always in the direction of the contact so for this case normal force is not straight vertical not vertical but following the geometry of the touch line yeah so for example if the 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 the, the floor is like this normal force is like this yeah it's not straight vertical no follow the normal of the floor yeah. okay so i want to ask one more don't be afraid you can always say i don't know and i cannot answer yeah i want to ask again um, this time who wanna ask siren yeah siren hello can you turn on the mic yes sir yeah, siren is the gravitational force and the normal force uh action reaction pair or is it is it different and this force you know this one that i this one that I draw is the normal force and the gravitational force. Is this an action reaction couple or not? Mm. What I do you think, think. Yeah. I think action and reaction couple. Yes. Uh, but you have to understand. I said before, action and reaction is on one body or uh, two different bodies. Um, two different. Right. Now you can see at the picture they are acting on the same body or different body the gravity is work, is working on the book the normal force is also working on the book so what's your conclusion um uh action and reaction not in couple yeah they are are are, are there action and reaction or not because they are working on the same thing you know that's the problem we are working on the book, yeah, on the box, on the red box there. But action and reaction must always occur in the same system or different system. Different system. So your conclusion is: is that is this action reaction or not? Your conclusion. Mm, not. It's not action reaction because because why? Because uh, this is in one system. Yeah, this is one system. Actually, um, can you explain to me what is the action and reaction? Gravity is down and the reaction is working on the earth, right? The earth is full upward like the sun and the earth. The sun and the earth, the earth and the moon. So this is the heavy, uh, the, the weight and this is also the reaction. The book is also pulling the earth, although this effect is very small. And the normal force also have the couple. Where is the couple of the normal force? Working on the table, right? Yeah. What happened on the table? The table is pressurized downward. Yeah. Ditekan ke bawah, right? Mm. So we have how many force do we have here? One two, three, four, right? Yeah. How many couples? One or two couples? Two couples. Two, two couples, right? So what is your conclusion? The forces is always in couple, right? Yeah. Yeah. But when we analyze the motion of a body, we only see the reaction force. We don't see the action force. I mean, we only see one of the uh, the only see the force acting on the body not looking at the whole system yeah yeah there is no single force there is no single force what is the conclusion there is no single force every force must have a partner right this is the concept of action and reaction okay thank you you can turn off the mic thank you students yeah you see physics is very interesting now you understand dynamics more clearly yeah. 
remember the weight and the normal force although they act the same direction opposite and simultaneously they don't fulfill the requirement that it has to be different bodies it has to be different bodies it's working on one body so it's not possible that they're action and reaction yeah actually when you move the table into an angel the angle yeah, it's an angle the book yeah gravitational force is moving downwards but the normal force is not a vertical upwards you can see the normal force is on this direction because the the, the table is not tilted yeah mirroring yeah table is not tilted so they are not not pointing downward anymore what is the conclusion in this case the normal force is not the same as the gravitational force yeah not the same as the weight force not the same it's only the same when what when the, the book is aligned in a flat position so this already proves that this is not action reaction the main argument is because there are different systems You can question ask question anytime. So friction force. What is friction force? Friction force is a force due to contact. Yeah, it is a electromagnetic force actually. So the friction force is this kind of force. Contact between the atoms and the top and the atoms below. This is the table. This is the book. Friction force occurs of two different systems. One is the book, one is the table. So two different systems. So there is action and reaction. Yeah. When, for example, you push the book to the right, you also actually produce the book. Yeah. Uh, they move to the right. Because of the contact of the atoms of the book with the table, actually, yeah, uh, you move the atoms in the table a little bit to the right, a little bit to the right, a different color, a little bit to the right, and as the result, they will produce a friction here to the left. We call it gesekat, yeah, friction force. It's the force, for example, if you push the book with your hand. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, so this is also there is action reaction. Yeah. So what is your conclusion? That the if the resultant force is uh, not zero, then the book will move. Yeah? For example, if the force minus the friction force yeah, is not zero. If the force is larger than the friction force, then the book will move to the right. If there is no friction, this is more simple. Yeah. If there is no friction, it's because then you would only have one resultant force, which is your force pushing the book, is the only force. But now you have to be careful when there is friction. Yeah. Now, many people think that the static friction is always equal to mu s times n, which is the normal force. This is wrong. Actually, this is the maximum static friction. Yeah. Why? Because the friction force, you will see. Let me ask you one more question. Now you have a book and you give a force. Zakia, can you turn on your mic, please? Yes, sir. Yeah, Sakia, thank you. If you, for example, give a force to the book, yeah, by your hand, for example, and because the book is very heavy, the book doesn't move even you give a push. What does it mean? Why is the book not moving? What happened between the book and the table? What's there? The book is not moving. What happened? There is friction, right? Yeah. Yeah, what in what direction is the friction force? The static friction force. Left. Left. That's right. Is it the same? Same. 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 No. No. I wanna ask you the question. 
if the book doesn't move you give for example 20 newton how much is this how much is the friction force if the book doesn't move i think 20 it's also 20 newton what is your what is your conclusion for example you you give the book another push 25 newton and the book doesn't move what is the friction force still 20 or 25 now 25 you push with a lesser force only 50 <laughs> newton 50 newton how much is the friction force to be not move 50 newton. yeah so what is your conclusion the friction force here is always the same as the the friction sure. force yeah it's always the same as the pushing force yeah yes so friction force is not equal to mu s times n which is mu s is the coefficient yeah coefficient is the strength of the adhesion force between the book and the table so the conclusion is the frictional force is always the static frictional force is always the same as the <coughs> as the pulling force now what happens suddenly i want to ask you again when you give a big pull like say five uh, 50 newton and suddenly the book move the book move what does it mean the book moves then the friction force now is smaller than the pushing force right yeah yeah, yeah. what is the maximal what is the maximal friction force the maximal friction force is equal to mu s times n yeah. right so if mu s times n, for example, is equal to 30 newton, then you have a sigma f of 50 minus 30. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. And if the mass is 2 kilogram divided by 2, you have the acceleration, right? You have the acceleration is equal to 10. <coughs> yeah. Uh, so. Yes, sir. Always understand. Yeah. Nah. But when you are in motion, yeah, uh, no, when you are in motion, then the friction force is not the static friction force, but the kinetic friction force. The kinetic friction force is mu k times n. The static maximum is mu s times m. Why do we have to have this mu s per m? Mu s times m is important if we want to know when does the body start to move right for example if mu s is 0 0.5 and n is for example 100 then the body will move only if the force is more than 50 newton is that correct yes yeah okay. you can turn off the microphone thank you, thank you. so yes yeah. so our conclusion is yeah the maximum friction force is used to understand when is the maximum for uh, the minimum force required to move the body after the body move we have to calculate the acceleration is equal to f minus the uh, kinetic the kinetic uh, friction force yeah? divided yeah, by the mass r is equal to a is sigma f divided by m sigma f is f min f so now I want to ask Muhammad Isan. Hello, Muhammad Isan. Yes, sir. Why is mu k different than mu s? Usually, mu k is always smaller than mu s. Why? They have the same. They have the same material, the book and the table. But why is different? Uh, because uh, to move, mu k uh, must be bigger. Uh, that's almost correct because when you when you're moving what is the friction when you're moving the atoms is more connected more attached or less attached when you move is it is it fric the friction higher or lesser when you move uh, uh, uh when you move yeah when when move uh, the frictional less usually less or higher when you move less Less, that's right. Because the atoms are no, not uh, connected strongly because they're moving, yeah? So it's more easier, more easier to overcome the 
restriction, right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. You can turn off your mic. Thank you. So, yeah, that's the, the correct. Yeah. The reason is because when you move, the atoms will already feel inertia. Yeah. So they are more loosely attached each other, and therefore the coefficient is smaller. In practicum, you will learn how to calculate the coefficient. You can use the tangent here from this uh, experiment here. You can try to find the value of mu s in the practical. Okay, so but you have to understand mu s and mu k can be larger than one. For example, in tires, yeah, in wheels, there the friction force must be high. So for braking, example, so mu s and mu k can also be larger than one. You see 1.2, 1 1.3, 4 tires, yeah? So there, there, is, there is no restriction, uh, sorry, uh, that they can be smaller than one. Usually they are smaller than one, but also they can be larger than one, yeah? Okay, till now you are standing very nicely, this picture. So you see gravitational force is a force at distance, yeah? acting on a distance. So gravitational force is a force between two masses. They are equal and opposite. This is the action and reaction. Yeah. So actually when you are standing, yeah, you are also pulling the earth upwards, but this effect is very small because the acceleration now is proportional to the force and the mass. Yeah. Your, your mass is very small compared to the mass of the Earth. Yeah. So the acceleration here filled by the Earth is very small. Okay. The acceleration is equal, the acceleration of the Earth because of your presence is equal to the small force because of your mass divided by the huge mass yeah, of the Earth. Yeah. So, so what happens is, is practically zero. 0 0.000 so many. But there is, in principle, you are attracting the earth towards you and towards all the all the body. Yeah? And this is also the reason why the earth must be round. Yeah? Because everyone will feel the same gravity. Yeah? If you have a flat earth, yeah, you know flat earth, yeah? There are some people who believe in flat earth. Then the gravitational acceleration are different in each point. And this is not making sense because you can measure the gravitational acceleration very easily. Just just use your top watch. Yeah. Yeah. And do like this. Yeah. And calculate uh, using kinetics, very simple. The acceleration is equal to uh, half, uh, sorry, <coughs> the acceleration. S is equal to half a t squared. So you just measure the time. You see the distance is the initial height, like for many centimeters. And the acceleration you can find by uh, 2s divided by a, yeah? if, uh, sorry, divided by t squared. Very simple. And you will find 9.8 meter per second. It's the same you measure in in Malaysia, in Indonesia, in Germany, in New York, in Paris, in any place. It's the same. This is the proof that the Earth is a shaping, uh, having a, a round shape, a spherical shape. Yeah. If you believe in the flat Earth, then you have to have different different amount of mass uh, of gravitational acceleration. Not correct. Very simple. Okay, so so actually we have to be very quick here yeah, because time is running out. But you see here that the normal force is not always uh, the same as the gravitation. Yeah, and, and when you falling down from the elevator, you don't feel any normal force because you are free fall on the street. Okay. What happens when you feel uh, when you walk on ice? You will feel that it's hard to walk because of the small friction. <coughs> friction, can you see? As 
I said before, is an electromagnetic uh, interaction. Friction force is always opposite to the motion. Yeah. Normally, normally, <coughs> um, I can give you cases where this is not the case, but this is more complex. For example, if we have another body here, but this is just okay, another body here. This is more complex yeah? because the friction can be in the same direction also. But normally, the friction force is always opposite to the motion. There are static friction force, as I told you before. The maximum is not the same as the normal. Yeah, The normal static force is always equal to the force. It's always smaller or equal to the maximum. But this is this is not always correct. Yeah? This is not always correct. It can be larger than one. Kinetic force also can be larger than one. But the kinetic friction is equal to mu k times. Yeah, this is the second law. Mass is bigger here and um, smaller acceleration. Yeah. And here's the second law. Actually, it's not so important to understand the mathematical theory. The primary is you understand the concept. So what you have to do to solve this problem, just try to draw a diagram, a force diagram, yeah? and you just simple like this. Yeah? We have F1 and F2, we have the normal, we have the gravity, the weight, yeah, so. and always remember what is the system, what is the environment, it's the system, and everything else is the environment. Yeah? can answer this question easily. Mass of the car, acceleration of the car. Yeah? Just add the two forces divided by the mass. <coughs> Newton's law see, can be seen here because there is no friction. So when you push in space, yeah, you will be pulled back. Yeah, pulled back because there is no friction force that will counterbalance. Thank you. That for me was an interesting lecture. There's a less joke, I'm sorry, I usually joke more, but because of the interesting topic, I have to be more, a little bit more serious. So, Raihan, what do you think about our lecture today? Any comments about my lecture? Anyone? <coughs> right hand, come on. Uh, um, yeah, I think all clear. All good, sir. Yes. Do you understand more now? Yes, now I'm better uh, than more, before. More, more dizzy, more dizzy or, or high temperature? No, right? <laughs> but but you, you, you feel that you understand better now? Yes. Then in a high school. Okay, nice. Okay, Pirdaus, what's your opinion? You can turn off your mic. Oh, Pirdaus. Yes, sir. Pirdaus. Oh my God, I, you you make me uh, feel afraid. Okay, so Pirdaus, uh, what do you think about the lecture? It's interesting, sir, because I understand the way you're explaining to me. It's uh, different from my high school. Uh, the way you make a story to give us explanation is good, sir. Thank you, sir, very much. Thank you. Okay, right. good. Yeah. Um, okay. You can turn off your mic. So, uh, I have nothing against high school. I, I, I am sure your high school teachers try very hard to understand uh, because they have a curriculum um, problem, um, not problem, but limitation. They have to teach you many things, including solve problems. This, therefore, you in a very uh, quick way, and sometimes skip the concept. Yeah, not the fault of your high school teacher. It is the problem with physics is that there are too many things to learn in one subject. So today, 
uh, all the physics teachers in IPP University try to make uh, the concept more understandable by focusing more on the concept, yeah? focusing less on the calculation, focusing more on the concept. When you understand the concept, there will be no problem for you to solve the any. Yeah? Uh, the calculation is followed by mathematics. Okay. <coughs> okay. Uh, Alia, can you turn on the mic? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. Sir. What do you think about the lecture? Um, first so good. I understand. Hmm? The lecture. Okay. So, uh, do you think that physics should be teach? More in conceptual ways like this, you think it's better to teach physics more with stories like this? Yes, I think it's better to teach physics with concept. So, so, uh, you see, thank you for your question. You can turn off your mind. So, understanding uh, Newton's law is not by memorizing, but try to apply in your daily life. Yeah, whenever you are having to solve a problem in solving mechanics. Please use your creativity. Use your curiosity, creativity, and logic. And so try to understand. To understand, when you try to understand, it is more fun. Yeah? Because you know what's behind the, the calculation. Remember system and environment. Remember action and reaction. Remember force and inertia. So you don't feel afraid of physics. But you try to enjoy this. Yeah? I don't really care if you have, for example, a bad mark on physics. Yeah? Because I want you to understand more. I am more afraid if you give up to study physics. You have to enjoy this. Because the mark is only temporary. But the way you study, the way to upgrade your thinking, this determines your future career. Remember? You can have a B or C at this moment, but maybe you have an A on your life. Yeah? Means that you will be a problem solver in the future. Maybe you can become a very successful person in career. Because you know, try to understand rather than to memorize. Don't try to memorize. Only memorize the number of your boyfriend, girlfriend, or memorize the number, the shoe number of your school or your partner. Yeah. Because when the holiday is coming, sorry, when the birthday is coming, you have to know what is the, the right size. Yeah? You have to remember those things. In physics, try to enjoy more. Yeah? Try to enjoy more. <coughs> okay. So, anyone, whoever, can give comments now. Yeah? Uh, what you think about the lecture? Anyone, turn on your mic. Then. So we will uh, close the lecture. Any comments? Okay. One more maybe. Um, Surya Kumaren. Uh, Surya. Surya. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, is it, is it interesting, this lecture for you? What do you think? Yes, sir. So, like like what everyone has to say, also, it is uh, very interesting, sir, because of your way of teaching. And, like, uh, honestly, I actually have no interest in physics last time. But uh, now, I just, like, you know, plan to think twice and uh, sit in your class and actually listen, sir. Okay. So, yeah, my... Uh... My message to you is, please, um, please maintain the way of thinking and the enthusiasm. Right? When you try to do something in the future, please choose the thing that you like. Yeah. Sometimes the thing that you like is not the same as your parents. So you have to really pursue the things that you like. You have to say to your parents, um, maybe uh, in a good way, yeah? or if you don't like to do this job because you just don't love it. But my message to you is, please do the things that you like. And if you, if you like something, then you are very powerful because you have the spirit of, the spirit of uh, passion. No passion. Um, 
for example, uh, can you turn on the mic? <coughs> so, what is your long time patient, Surya? Can you can you tell? Me? I'm sorry, sir. I couldn't what hear. Is your long patient. What is your dream 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 job? What is your passion? Oh, uh, I would like to pursue in a uh, uh, vet, sir. Sorry. In, in veterinary, sir. Veterinary. So, my message to you is try to make it fun, try to enjoy what you do, and try to be uh, curious. Yeah, try to be the best veterinary because you like it because it's fun. If you don't like it, you have to think about your future again. But if you like it, yeah, and and just this doesn't doesn't mean that you have to like it at this moment. But at least in the future, you find a way to like it. So for all of my students now, try to like what you I, I like physics very much. I don't want you to force to be physicist, but please try to do something that you really really want to do. Yeah? And sometimes, and this is hard. What we want to do is not the same as our parents. Huh? So you have to be very, very patient with them and say that I really want to do and I want to be the best. Huh? Uh, I hope that your parents will understand your career choice. Okay? So this is my message to you. Uh, yeah, I hope Surya also become a successful veterinary. Huh? Thank uh, you, sir. Thank you. I hope the best. So. Uh, for all of you, yeah. So please like what you will do. Remember, yeah, it's not about money. Sometimes money will come, but it's more about your passion. Sometimes you do something for money and it's not fun anymore. Uh, when you do for passion, the money will come. Right? This is my my message. And this lecture. Can also be applied to your future. So you have a problem that you have to solve. You can use the way of thinking as a physicist or a scientist to solve your problem, whatever they are veterinary problem, uh, mechanic engineering problem, fishing, petra, all the problems can be solved by using the thinking, the way of thinking of what you learned today, the logic. Yeah. So I'm not trying to be your big, big parents. I just want to share my experience that when you are trained in physics, you have very good chance to success in any career, to be successful in any career, yeah? because you have good logic. So thank you for your attention. <laughs> and uh, see you next week. Yeah, Maybe see you on Friday on practicum. I hope you like this lecture. I will give you the record of the lecture after this. Uh, and uh, yeah, I wish you a very good afternoon. Uh, see you next time. Bye bye. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good day all. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, well. Thank you for all the best. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Welcome.